Hey guys, uh, here's my other mitten video. I'm a little out of breath because I'm literally walking through the woods here. Uh, really nice, sunny afternoon. Um, so um, I just wanted to find a place here where there was a lot of sunlight so you could see these, these beautiful mittens. So these are only the second pair of Norwegian mittens that I've ever mit uh, knit. I knit my first pair in 2020 and I, I can't believe, I guess I always have beginner's luck because they came out perfect. I didn't have to worry about the size. They had great instructions and it was just, I just took it for granted that all the patterns I would get in the future would come out that easily, but no, <laughs> it, was like, it, it, it didn't work out so much with this pair. So for starters, uh, I, the pattern calls for worsted waist, worsted weight yarn which I used, and I used the recommended needles for a size large, and this was the first mitten that I got, and it was uh, probably ended up being a size small, so my gauge is really off, and I think it has a lot to do with this yarn. It's the Wool Folk uh, Far, and it's this chainette construction, and it's just a very light, airy yarn, and so it doesn't... It's just, uh, it's not very dense, it's very light, and so when you're knitting with it with Chowgu needles, it feels like it kind of shrinks back down to almost a fingering weight yarn. And so I went up a needle size, and I still didn't get the right size for my hand. If you can see the difference here. And so finally I went up another needle size, which you can see here, I've got it inside out to put the, uh, t sew the tails in. Finally, I think I got the right size, but I still think I could probably go up another needle size. So, um, I just really wanted to let people know whenever you follow these Nor Norwegian patterns, so, so many of them say, uh, you know, if you want to do the next size up, just go up a needle size or, Get a, get, dip, dip, get a different weight of yarn, blah, blah, blah. And it is not easy at all. <laughs> uh, I had to really persist and I didn't nail it until I had knit my third mitten and gone through all my yarn. So you can see with this one, I haven't even put the thumb on, but this is what the back looks like. And uh, this is uh, what the thumb looks like here. And the instructions were flawless. Uh, you can see the inside of the thumb there. So the instructions were flawless. I, I, find, I definitely think the pattern is amazing, but um, I, I don't, I'm really conflicted because uh, if you do a gauge swatch, basically you're more or less knitting half the mitten because you need to do at least four inches. And so I always just make big assumptions that I'm going to kind of guess right and I usually do with hats but with with mittens because I'm so new at it I found that guessing is definitely a little heartbreaking if you get it wrong especially with a yarn like this where it's just a very unique type of yarn so uh to, to, so to make a long story short I used the first I used the needle size recommended for the size large and I ended up getting a size small mitten and uh so I just kept going up a needle size and then another needle size till I got the right size. Um, one thing I wanted to say is I did a little bit of research online and uh, there's, I guess there's a, there's a, a bit of back and forth in the knitting world. Uh, some people are sort of down on pattern writers that uh, don't draft uh, different patterns for different sizes, uh, like the Diana Wallen mittens. Those instructions are very different depending on the size that you knit. Uh, she doesn't say go up a needle size or down a needle size or change the gauge of your yarn. You definitely get a different pattern to get a different mitten size. So she focuses on uh, Scandinavian knitting a lot. So if that's a concern for you, I definitely recommend looking into Diana's patterns uh, because she will give you a written out pattern with a charted design and it's different for each size. So that's the good thing. 
but you can but I also wanted to encourage you to persist if you end up with a pattern you really love and you really want to do some selbu mittens like these and the author tells you you know you just have to go up a needle to get a different size uh, you know even though this one didn't work out I'm sure I could gift it to somebody so it's not a total loss it was great practice and I learned a lot because I was super rusty with my double pointed needles you can see the edge stitches there some of them were a little bit uh, loose and so and then when I the one neat thing about so I have to back up a little bit. Um, the pattern designer was encouraging uh, this, the, the premise behind the design theory of this particular type of knitting, of this particular type of knit and mitten, is that you use thicker yarn with smaller needles. So for example, if you're using worsted weight yarn, use needles for fingering weight yarn. That way you get a really dense, thick, very warm mitten. That was the basic premise behind uh, how she designed these mittens. And you can see the knitting is just gorgeous because you get these tiny little stitches. The knitted fabric is really tight and all the stitches kind of line up really beautifully. No wonkiness in the gauge. And I'm not getting a lot of, you know, stretched out stitches or anything like that. But when I went to the, when I went up two needle sizes, you don't get that effect. It looks more like a a rug to me <laughs> like the stitches stand out more some are kind of wonky <laughs> I get some stretched out stitches because I'm knitting with a looser gauge and you don't get that fine gauge knitting I remembered reading once one of these um, people that I'm sorry to say I can't remember her name but she's kind of big in the design the knitting design world from Esatonia and um I remember her saying that the most beautiful fair isle knitting is in fine gauge yarn and fine gauge needles and I I can't disagree with her. I mean, I definitely see uh, that it just does come out so beautiful, but when you have a pattern written um like that and you can't fit into the size small, you're going to get into, you know, bigger gauge knitting to get the size you need to fit your hand. Um the one thing that I did do that I, that I found really helpful because I don't know how to do magic loop and I, I'm kind of terrified of doing magic loop because um, I'm always thinking I'm going to get laddering where the wires are kind of coming out want the, 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 wire, the, the cable from the needle just I'm always thinking it's going to stretch the heck out of my side stitches so I, I'm too terrified to do magic loop but what I did with this mitten is I used a 16 inch circular and put all of the needles for the front of the mitten on the 16 inch circular. And then I knit across it with another 16 inch circular. And that's how uh, I was able to get the knitting to look really nice and smooth on this mitten. That was another factor that led to this one coming out much nicer. And so I didn't do it with this mitten uh, all the way through because uh, I just kind of forgot about it and just kept going with my double pointed needles and I was kind of feeling confident that it was kind of turning out okay but then when you go, go up to this section here it's a little bit more wonky so anyways um, it was super fun I had seen uh, a knitter online who's a famous teacher Beth Brown Meinzel uh, she I saw her knitting some mittens on her channel and she had all of her stitches for the front of the mitten on one double pointed needle I'm like that's the perfect way not to get laddering in the middle of your mitten, especially if you're doing fair out. But I was like, well, I only have six inch needles. Maybe you need eight inch needles for that, for double pointed needles. So I just went for it. And I don't know if other people have done this, but I just kind of felt like I invented it in my head and I tried it out and it worked out great. I just grab a 16 inch uh, circular needle, um, put all the stitches for the front of your mitten onto that and knit across with another circular needle and it keeps the front stitches on your mitten really nice and then see I'm filming this all by myself uh this is what the back how this is how the back came out on my second try um and so you can see I it was nothing but double pointed it just I used two double pointed needles on the back and that came out pretty good too so uh I learned a lot, you guys. Um, 
you know, I think I'm really hard on myself. You know, I, I was, when I first finished these, I thought, oh my God, my edge, my edge stitches are a nightmare. <laughs> but uh, honestly, when I look at it, I'm like, gosh, I must be so hard on myself because they look pretty okay to me. And it's just see all these other knitters on uh, Instagram who have been doing this for years and years and years. And I feel like, oh, mine aren't anywhere near as pretty. So uh, if you want to know the colors, this is like a, I don't know uh, what wool folk uh, far uh, color numbers these are. They don't have color names, but basically it's pink and charcoal gray. Um, I didn't save the tags to uh, document uh, what exact uh, yarn colors I used. And also I wanted to say that I bought this at a yarn store and the yarn smells like perfume. And I got really scared because I thought maybe Wool Folk is putting perfume in their yarn, but they're not. Uh, I got an email from customer service. They said, if this yarn smells like perfume, it happened at the store, not in the processing of the wool. Anywhere in the warehouse, they keep it all scent free. So it was just a bit of a coincidence because I had bought some yarn at two different stores last summer. Both of them smelled like perfume. And it was the same perfume. One just one set one purchase just had a stronger smell. I put it in a plastic bag and it was giving me a migraine so bad. So I just, I tucked it away in a plastic bag and three months later it just smelled even worse. And the smell was coming outside the plastic bag. So I it was just a lost it was just something I couldn't do. So if you're buying yarn online, if you have migraine pain like me and my uh, odors trigger pain. I found like when the pandemic started, I was buying all this yarn and it'd be coming back to me with all this perfume. So I just started putting into my order, please make sure it doesn't smell like perfume. Uh, unfortunately, I was wearing a mask when I bought this yarn. I took it with me, left it in my knitting bag. And then a couple months later, I took it out and I was like, oh my God, it smells like perfume. It was a huge bummer. Uh, I'm not going to say what yarn shops I bought them from, but I will never buy yarn at those shops again because I think they're keeping their inventory in a room where they're putting some kind of scent in there to keep it from not picking up other odors like mildew or whatever else they might be worried about because I, I know the buildings of these two shops were extremely old in, in high humidity climates where it's prone to mildew so and I did kind of detect a little mildew in one of the purchases. So yeah, it's a huge bummer. My, the, my favorite store for wool folk, folk yarn I can't, I can't buy from and I'm really intimidated to buy any yarn at all because I'm so terrified it's going to arrive with perfume. That's that's how bad of an experience I had. Um, but it's it doesn't happen on on the wool folk side. So uh, anyways, these this, this pattern was amazing. I learned a lot. This is an amazing yarn. I, if I wasn't so worried about the perfume, I'd rush out and buy a whole bunch more. I I said to myself, I had so much grief with this mitten that I would just only knit this mitten for the rest of my life because it took me two weeks to figure out what needle and yarn combination I needed to get a mitten that would actually fit me. So sorry for talking so much. Uh, oh, finally, I just wanted to say, don't be intimidated by the thumb. Uh, there's an amazing gal online who actually did an entire tutorial on Selbu Mittens. I'll try to link to that, but if I don't, if you type in Selbu Mittens, it's all in, you'll find it on YouTube. It's in English and God bless her because I have a book that I bought that taught me how to read the charts and do the thumbs and I'd be lost without it if I just purchased any mitten pattern. I just would not be able to figure this out. But this gal has a whole tutorial. Well, that book is out of print, but this gal has a whole tutorial on how to do this online. So super awesome thing that you can check out if you've never done these mittens and you want to give it a try. So, okay. It was so nice. Uh, so nice chatting with you, whoever happens to stop by my channel. Um, hope you guys are having a good weekend or whatever the day of the week it might be. Uh, give you a little scene of where I'm at in the forest. It's very beautiful. One of my favorite places to come. 
so, yeah, the air in here smells so good. And it's so peaceful. I wish everybody could come to a place like this and just feel how peaceful it is in here. So, okay. Uh, I'll see you on the next video. Bye for now.